Wait, what are they doing? I don't know, they're just standing there like zombies. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 weirdest episodes of Family Guy. Look, Fry, that one looks just like you. What are you getting mad at me for? After all, he gets his fat from your jeans, which, by the way, I'm wearing. The real storm's in here. Uh, okay. The emotional storm. For this list, we're looking at the most bizarre episodes in Family Guy history. We aren't necessarily saying that these episodes are bad in any way. They're just really weird. What do you think is the oddest episode of Family Guy? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Road to the Multiverse This is easily one of the most famous episodes of Family Guy and also one of the most bizarre. Where is my supper? Still in the oven. Will I have it soon? Quite soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. It concerns Stewie and Brian traveling through multiple parallel universes, each of which comes equipped with their own unique theme or idea. Where are we? This is Cohort, Brian. Same year, same time. But in this universe, Christianity never existed. Some of these include a world in which Christianity doesn't exist and a world in which dogs rule humans. This is my family. My wife, Lois. My son, Chris. Chris, stop licking yourself and come up and say hi. The episode also cycles through various animation styles, with Stewie and Brian visiting a robot chicken world and a world largely inspired by old-school Disney films. The episode is a total trip. In the best and most creative way possible, of course. We all sing with glee, cause we all agree it's a wonderful, wonderful day for pie. Number 9. Brian and Stewie It's not often that Family Guy gets serious. Brian and Stewie is the rare exception. You know, today started as a really nice outing, but as usual, you had to ruin it. I had to ruin it. Yeah, you. In this one, the titular characters become trapped inside a bank vault and proceed to share intimate thoughts and feelings with each other. It's a truly bizarre episode that breaks from many Family Guy traditions. You stink! And now I'm trapped in here with you and your stink because you were too stupid to call somebody who could help us! That really hurt. There's no music, Brian and Stewie are the only main characters to appear, and there are none of Family Guy's famous cutaway gags. You're a monster. Hey, you started this whole thing. You son of a bitch, I could kill you for that. Oh, really? Well, how convenient. You've got a gun right there. This episode gets weirdly dark, complete with Brian revealing his plan to take his own life. The producers and writers took a huge risk with this episode, and opinion on its quality remains firmly divided. Sometimes it's, it's all too much. What is? Life, everything. Number 8. Big Trouble and Little Quahog Yet another episode centered around Brian and Stewie, Season 17's Big Trouble and Little Quahog has the pair shrunk to microscopic size following an accident with Stewie's shrink ray. Ah! The two are forced to avoid some violent dust mites and eventually meet a friendly group of water bears. A water bear? What's a water bear? They're predominantly water-dwelling, eight-legged, segmented micro-animals. They're also known as a moss piglet or a tardigrade. You can call me tardy, but I'm always on time. When they finally restore themselves to proper size, they inadvertently expand a pair of dust mites and are chased around the house before being saved by a tiny Tom Cruise. Tiny Tom Cruise? It all sounds like something out of a fever dream, and it makes for some truly offbeat viewing. How can we ever repay you? Well, you could make a sizable donation to the Church of Spaceship Beep Boop. Number 7. Three Directors Family Guy often experiments with style, and Season 16's Three Directors is a prime example. I've had enough of your nonsense. Here's Christoph Waltz to fire you in a weird accent. You're fired? In this episode, three separate storylines are told through the style of three distinct film directors. In the first, Peter faces off against his boss Angela in a Quentin Tarantino segment largely inspired by Kill Bill. Peter, you can tell I'm different because my weapon is different. In the second, a turn-of-the-century Peter puts on an amateur play in a segment inspired by Wes Anderson. Max, you've returned! I have. <laughs> this took a lot of work. In the third and final, Peter battles Decepticons with beer kegs in the vein of bombastic Michael Bay films. It's a very creative episode, and it wonderfully highlights the show's penchant for non-stop pop culture references. Peter, you're alive, but but how? You, you were blown into a million pieces. Luckily, I know a couple of pretty good welders. Number six, The Splendid Source. Look, you blade, just tell us who you heard it from. 
It turned out the joke already had quite a history. The mere concept of this episode is bizarre and near unfathomable, as it sees Peter, Joe, and Quagmire attempting to find the source of dirty jokes. Of course, things get even weirder throughout the episode. In the final act, the men are kidnapped and taken to a remote island, where they learn about the so-called secret order of dirty joke writers. These are the people who write all the world's dirty jokes? Indeed they are. Hey, isn't that Stephen Hawking? The order is composed of the world's smartest individuals, and their job is to craft dirty jokes and disseminate them throughout the world using undercover joke distribution agents. If Sheila was a road sign, it would read, Open Trench. <laughs> Quite fittingly, the episode also features a guest appearance by David Lynch. Hi there, what can I do for you gentlemen? We've traveled a very long way to find out where you heard this joke. Oh, <laughs> I remember that. I heard it from that guy. The Splendid Source is based on a short story written by horror author Richard Matheson, and that makes a surprising amount of sense. Number 5. Herpy the Love Sore the title alone tells you all you need to know about this crazy episode. I mean, I really feel the bond, Brian. I feel like we're closer now, you know, more connected, more intertwined. As it suggests, Brian gives Stewie herpes after the two conduct a Blood Brothers ritual. Stewie later learns that Chris also has herpes, which was also given to him by Brian. He knew he had herpes and he didn't say anything. Maybe he was mad I gave him fleas, I don't know. The two then sabotage one of Brian's dates, and the episode ends with Brian telling Stewie not to worry about his new case of herpes, as it will only flare up in times of great stress. It's like your wedding day or a big job interview. Family Guy is no stranger to controversial storylines and jokes, but it seems like a certain line was crossed when Brian gave two of his family members herpes. That bastard! Well, we need to teach him a lesson. He's a menace! Number 4. He's too sexy for his fat. Most of the weird episodes come in the later seasons of Family Guy, but this one can be found in season two. All right, son, I'm gonna need those two hams back. Chris grows self-conscious about his weight, and Peter asks him to consider liposuction. After visiting a surgeon, Peter decides to get the operation himself and is turned into a muscular hunk. Knock, knock. Hey, pal, you can't just walk in here without holy crap, it's Peter. People around Quahog begin to take notice, and Peter is invited to join the Beautiful People's Club. Hey, there's a lot of good-looking people here. Of course. This is the Quahog Beautiful People's Club, and you're our newest member. This in turn boosts his ego, and Peter becomes estranged from the family. He can't come in. <laughs> He's fat. Well, let me tell you something, buddy. If my son can't come in, then I'll just come in. See you at home. Turning Peter into a muscular and gorgeous sex symbol was a bit of creative genius, and it resulted in one of the most unique and memorable episodes of the entire series. And now I will take off this protective potato head mask. Oh, Peter, he look like you! Number 3. Back to the Pilot This episode is bizarre on multiple levels. It begins with Stewie and Brian going back in time and encountering their past selves the footage of which is taken from the show's pilot episode, Death Has a Shadow. You know, I actually think this might be my first memory. Stewie, I said no toys at the table. Damn you, vile woman! You've impeded my work since the day I escaped from your wretched womb. The episode then launches into a great bit of meta-comedy, as the characters comment on the crude animation and cutaways. Yeah, I mean, now we just, like, return text messages and screw around and whatnot. Lois, I'm not going back to work tomorrow. That new boss has it in for me. He's meaner than a shifty salesman. Things get even weirder when Brian tells past Brian about 9-11, resulting in an altered post-apocalyptic future in which America has become embroiled in a second civil war. Freeze, Frogmire! You are out past curfew and therefore in violation of local ordinance. Ribbity. Other shenanigans are also included, like Brian becoming the writer of the Harry Potter series. Must be weird hanging out with us muggles, huh, Brian? Yeah. Well, laundryum insert em, huh? It's a very unique episode of Family Guy, and it proves that they are never content with just one gimmick. Just go back to where you came from and stay there! Number 2. Seahorse Seashell Party A hurricane hits Quahog and leaves the Griffin family without TV. To pass the time, Brian decides to take some mushrooms. It'll be a fun way to pass the time. He proceeds to trip out, encounters various terrifying visuals, and even attempts to take off his own ear. I'm gonna cut my ear off to prevent World War II. Meanwhile, Meg snaps at the family and finally confronts them about their behavior. Is it too 
too much to ask to be treated with a little decency from my brother? Maybe show me some kind of kindness by not jumping on the Let's Get Meg family bandwagon? This results in the family turning on each other and Meg realizing that she is a lightning rod for the family's frustrations. You're my mother, and you took a child's trust and smashed it into bits in a 17-year-long mission to destroy something that you killed a long time ago. It's another dramatic bottle episode that attempts to provide depth to the family and their interactions. How well it succeeded in that regard is down to personal opinion. Luckily, Brian's horrible trip is there to add some much-needed comic relief. Slip me some time. Did you try the chicken, buddy? Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. The 2,000-year-old virgin. Jesus makes an appearance. Your 2,000-year-long cold streak is about to come to an end. What do you mean? I'm saying, Jesus, we are going to help you lose your virginity. Family Guy viewer mail number one. Three shorts of madness. You can't stop us, Mayor West. We are all powerful. Clearly, you've let yourselves become drunk with power. Silence! <laughs> Roads to Vegas. Stewie and Brian make clones. We lost, Brian. Oh, crap, we're screwed. Hey, Stewie, give me $100 from the backpack. I want to pay a Wayne Newton lookalike to beat up a Rita Rudner lookalike. Con heiress. Brian and Quagmire run a con. Peter grows close to Herbert. Jeez, how many of us are doing this con? I've got no chance, have I? A tertiary character like me. You most certainly do not. I don't even think we're going to give you the dance you rehearsed. You're big for your age, ain't you, Petey? Yeah, doctor says I eat too much candy. Send in Stewie, please. Stewie talks to a child therapist played by Ian McKellen. You seem like a very lonely little boy. Oh my god, I am! I'm so lonely! <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Stewie is Enceinte Family Guy has aired a lot of weird episodes throughout the years, but Stewie is Enceinte is a different kind of weird. Brian's been so distant lately, and, and we used to be inseparable, like Jack and Jill. And maybe not in the most overtly entertaining kind of way. Feeling that he and Brian are drifting apart, Stewie steals some of Brian's DNA and impregnates himself. First, I add Brian's hair and saliva, and some preschool applications because we are already way behind. He then gives birth to Stewie-Brian hybrids. Look, Bri, that one looks just like you. And after he and Brian ponder the exorbitant cost of healthcare, they decide to ditch the offspring at a shelter. This is for the best. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they'll be adopted. Oh god, yeah. There's just so much here we don't even know where to start. And this episode definitely stands out as the most bizarre episode in Family Guy history. And that is truly saying something. Okay, this one is deaf. We are going to be spending a fortune on schools. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.